Thank you, and I appreciate very much uh, my colleague from Nevada. Let me start, Mr. President, by welcoming you back to the Senate and, and saying that we're glad that you're here and that you're feeling better. And, uh, and to my colleague from New Mexico, my neighbor, the senior senator from New Mexico, uh, Senator Udall, thank you for organizing us today. This is, I know, a matter that's very close to your heart. Thanks in large part to Senator Udall's leadership and uh, Senator from Arizona's leadership and others. We've worked really hard to not have public lands be a partisan issue uh, in, in uh, the Senate. And I think that reflects um, the way it is out west where our public lands really are the foundation of our economy and, and who we are. They make us who we are. They are a cultural touchstone for all of us in the West. And instead of comprehending this, President Trump, as he has done in so many other areas, has pursued a public lands agenda that is way outside the mainstream of conventional American thought. Few decisions better capture how extreme that position is and how fringe his, his agenda is than his decision to hire William Perry Penley to lead the Bureau of Land Management. As we've heard today, Mr. President, Mr. Penley doesn't even believe in the idea of public lands. He's argued that the Founding Fathers intended for all federal lands to be sold. Think about what that would have meant, uh, Mr. President, if we had sold off the public lands of the United States. They're the envy of the world. They are the envy of the world. And all the work that Teddy Roosevelt and others had done to make sure that our generation would be able to benefit uh, would have been lost uh, if Penley's constitutional interpretation had, uh, had, had control. Asking someone like that to manage our public lands, including 8.3 million acres in Colorado, is like asking somebody to be Secretary of Education who doesn't believe in public education. And given the track record of this administration, I guess it's not that surprising that he put somebody in charge of public lands who believed that they're actually illegal or unconstitutional. Mr. Penley is by far the most extreme anti-public <laughs> nominee in my lifetime. And, and you've heard the senator from New Mexico talk about his attacks on people of color, heard about his, the fact that he doesn't believe in climate change. Penley's ideology on public lands, on climate, on so many other issues, doesn't look anything like the consensus that we've worked so hard to try to establish in Colorado. And I think fundamental to this is that his extreme ideology does not perceive or conceive the economic reality in Colorado, or New Mexico, or Nevada, or Arizona or Montana, where public lands sustain local businesses and climate change is undermining our farmers and ranchers. And since the BLM moved to Colorado, sort of, we've had a front row seat to this extremist agenda. This spring, Penley signed off on a resource management plan that opened up the North Fork Valley of the Gunnison, one of our most beautiful agricultural valleys in Colorado to more oil and gas development. Local leaders worried that his plan failed to protect the region's watershed and will threaten the area's agricultural and outdoor economy. Instead of listening to Colorado, Mr. Penley signed off on a plan, as he so often does, written in Washington by a bunch of special interests here who want to plunder our land out there. As senators, we have a constitutional responsibility, Mr. President, to ensure that the people entrusted with leading our federal agencies are at a minimum qualified for the positions they hold, and I would hope are within the mainstream of conventional American political ideologies. But we've not been allowed to do that in this case. Mr. Penley was nominated by the president to lead the BLM. And the response was so negative 
that I have to imagine there were senators on the other side of the aisle who said, Senator McConnell, please don't make us take this vote. Please. I've got a tough election coming up. Don't make me take this vote, Mr. President. I'm scared to take this vote. And as a result, they withdrew his nomination because it couldn't pass the Senate. That's how this is supposed to work. You can always put it on the floor and see whether we'll support it. In this case, the, the response was so negative, they withdrew the nomination. That happens regularly. What's incredibly unusual in this case is they left him in his job. So having demonstrated that there was no public support in the Senate, the Senate unwilling to take a vote for fear of how unpopular it would be in the Western United States, they said, well, you can be the acting BLM director. That is a disgrace. I don't know how anybody in this chamber could call themselves committed to the United States Constitution if a president can nominate somebody, see that the votes aren't there, withdraw it, and make them the acting director of the agency. That's the work of a dictator, not the president of the United States. Every now and then, you'd expect the leader of this body to stand up for the prerogatives of this body, to stand up for the separation of powers and for the rule of law, particularly if you call yourself a constitutional conservative. We have a choice to make, to do nothing or do our jobs. The American people want us to do our jobs. They're sick of the dysfunction here. And from the perspective of Colorado, the decision on Mr. Penley is simple. Someone who spent his entire career opposed to the very idea of public lands is unfit to lead a land management agency, period. Mr. President, he should do the right thing if the president won't step down immediately and allow somebody to take on the responsibility that actually understands how important it is to preserve the legacy our parents and grandparents created for us so we can preserve it for the next generation of Americans and the generation after that. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.